What's up, everybody? Brett Mix here for the Monday Night Wars. This is week 62, December the 23rd, 1996. The 67th episode of Nitro, but the 61st week they go head-to-head with Raw. Nitro beats Raw for the 26th week in a row. The scores were 3.1 to 1.5. It wasn't very close. A 1.6 victory for Nitro. That's how much more. They had over a million and a half more viewers. This was the Starcade Go Home Show. For Hogan and Piper, the biggest match of the decade. Uh, this is the Nitro that had a 3.1 rating from December the 23rd, 1996 from the Mason Coliseum in Mason, Georgia, live on TNT. Sabisco and Shivani do the commentary, joined by Heenan and Tanay. They open up uh, the Nitro opening video package like always. I don't know why Vince doesn't open up with the Raw video package like always, but maybe it's because he wants to get your attention from the jump. I don't know. He went on three minutes early when Bischoff went on three minutes early, so it's possible he wants to get your attention and doesn't even have time to sacrifice an entrance video. For Raw, I mean, the Raw theme doesn't go on half the time. But the Nitro theme, always, always goes on. So I like that. Eddie Guerrero took on Chris Benoit with women in a semifinal U.S. tournament match. This is just another Benoit-Eddie match for WCW. They obviously have great chemistry, so why not throw them together? Uh, a slapping war and then a shoulder tackle by Benoit after a tie-up. Uh, he was chopping Eddie in the corner, and Eddie came back with chops. Both crisp, so both, both of them so crisp with their offense, but stiff. Benoit with an arm drag, then a snapmare into a headlock, and Eddie Guerrero countered with a tilt-the-world neckbreaker, and then a side headlock to the mat. Benoit got his shoulders on the mat, and Eddie kicked out after a lateral press. Guerrero with a side headlock takeover by Eddie, then by Benoit, as they both go into a head-scissors Nice chain wrestling. DDP comes in to interrupt the show. A standing side headlock into an atomic drop back into a side headlock. Eddie with Benoit laying on the mat. Benoit covered Eddie Guerrero with a small package. Inside cradles out of nowhere. Eddie Guerrero is, is elevated on the top rope. Benoit with a reverse chin lock. Then out of nowhere, Eddie Guerrero with a tilt whirl backbreaker. Eddie signals for the frog splash, but Benoit was a step ahead and had it scouted and hit a suplex. Both guys to their feet in the ring and are chopping back and forth. Benoit elevated him to the ropes and Eddie fights back coming off for the frog splash as Guerrero is the victorious around 10 minutes. So DDP was just there to scout, I guess. Three and a half stars for the match between Eddie and Benoit. The four horsemen cut a promo by the stage area about infidelity and things heat up between Benoit, McMichael, and Flair. And they all have their time to talk. Flair goes, Mead! By God, Gene! Like always. And, uh... He talks about the, what Flair always talks about. Bright lights, big cities, all that shit. While Benoit and McMichael are talking about family values, as is Deborah, And uh, they're talking about how Sullivan's taking things too far. Even though Benoit and, De- and Nancy are the ones taking things too far. The NWO come out and talk about how Piper is afraid of Hollywood. He talks trash and Savage and Piper knowing that Piper's not there. So Hollywood Hogan just runs Piper down in every way. Then runs down the for, for a few minutes before he poses. Lex Luger took on Tombstone next. Lex got another win over another big band with a rack at 338. Three quarters of a star. Giant comes out in his NWO shirt and attack Luger, but Giant stays on on him until Luger racked the Giant, too. So Luger actually got the Giant above his shoulders. The Outsiders came to the ring. Shivani says it's easy when it's three-on-one. Talking about the NWO outnumbering Luger as the Outsiders and the Giant took down Luger. They show recent happenings with Sting uh, in a video package that Rey Mysterio gets them to play. Says Sting. Rey Mysterio on the microphone said Sting is WCW. So he said, play the video package, and it just shows Sting what he's been up to as of late. Uh, Ray Mysterio then took on Mr. JL. Ray ties up with JL, dropped to a hold in an arm bar, followed by a quick escape by JL, a crossbody to the outside. Ray moved out of the way, then a flying hurricane run off the top. A guillotine leg drop at the top, and JL catches him with a powerbomb in midair after that. A backbreaker by Mr. JL, and Ray Mysterio landed on his feet and hit a springboard moonsault. A side suplex by Mr. JL Kitty kicked out. Mr. JL choking Mysterio on the bottom rope, using it as a lariat to clothesline him back to the canvas. A big chop by JL and a hurricane run by to Ray by an Oklahoma roll out of nowhere scores a near fall. A scoop slam, but Ray caught him then a springboard twice 
Up top for the Hurricane Runner, off the top, Rey Mysterio wins at 6.02. Keeps finding ways to be innovative, does Mysterio, or rated the match three stars. Out Pyro goes off as hour number two begins. Glacier takes on Buddy Lee Parker. Glacier kicks to Buddy Lee Parker and a twist with a wrist lock, but Buddy Lee Parker knees him. Glacier back with offense of a thrust kick in the top rope to the outside. Glacier with a back inverted snap mare, then a high thrust kick. Buddy Lee Parker is, um, is a lot with the bell rings, says Heenan. Glacier with a spinning round kick at the two, and then I guess the three. Glacier is booked really strong here. He wins at 229. I give it a star and three quarters. The amazing French Canadians take on Public Enemy. Shivani is dumb as hell when the French Canadians sing the anthem. They go from English to French in their lyrics, and Shivani goes, They don't even know the words. They're just spitting gibberish. They're speaking French, Shivani. Uh, that was bad. I can, and then Heenan says, Does anyone know the words anyway? I laughed at that. I can laugh about jokes about my country, but. At the same time, so I found he didn't comment funny, making fun of how no one knows the Canadian national. Anthem. That's funny, but Shivani thought speaking French was gibberish. He didn't understand that they were speaking a different language, and which was what French people in French provinces like Quebec and Canada do. They speak half English, half French in this in the anthem. Anyway, uh, the French Canadians win by DQ at three twenty three. Conan versus Big Bubba Rogers. Conan takes it to Big Bubba Rogers. And I rated the match a dud, by the way. That tag match, it was terrible. Conan is beaten down in this brawl with uh, Big Bubba Rogers, the, who you know as the boss man. If you don't know him as Big Bubba Rogers. He uh, t slaps on a sleeper and Jimmy Hart get ejected after complaining. Conan goes to work on Bubba with a thrust kick, a clothesline, a big takedown, a press slam, a power slam, an elbow drop before Irish ripping him over the top rope. Conan loses by DQ after throwing Bubba Rogers over the top rope. So I gave it a star at 536. Lord Steven Regal took on Dean Malenko. This will be great wrestling here. Malenko and Lord Steven Regal circuit each other a test of power. A drop to a hold, then a headlock, a side headlock by Malenko. He wants a clean break out of the corner, and then he kips up when he was pushed down. He grounded him with an arm ringer and then a waist lock, a go behind. Then he cartwheeled out and leapfrogged uh, Regal before hitting before Regal hit an insiguri. Uh, amazing chain wrestling for the first few minutes. Sonny Ono took some pictures as the Ultimo Dragon was scouting Malenko for Starcade. Regal with a snapmare and a sitting front face lock. Mark Curtis, the referee, threw out Sonny Ono on the outside. A forearm to the head as he grinds an elbow to the side of the head during a submission. Malenko is just vicious in there. Uh, a surfboard and then a suplex. A surfboard variation where he's locking the legs and the arms at the same time. And then a great butterfly German suplex. And then all of a sudden, the 10 minute time limit goes. So both these guys wrestled a three star at a quarter match to the 10 minute time limit in a draw. The main event was Jeff Jarrett versus Rick Steiner, and the crowd chanted for Sting. Both these guys wrestled a little bit. Uh, Jarrett threw Rick Steiner out of the ring, and then an imposter Sting comes in. And Jarrett covers the imposter Sting, and it's a three count. I rated it a dud because it made no sense and there was no wrestling really developed. How? Why would Jarrett pin the NWO Sting if he's not even in the match? He's facing Rick Steiner. So that does it for the match portion of the show. After that little dud of a performance, we get uh, the ending with Hollywood Hogan without a shirt playing the belt like a guitar. Piper a couple music hits and it's Bischoff dressed as Piper and he does a good Piper imitation. Well, his best. It wasn't terrible. Then Piper, the real, Scott's come out with the big Pipers, and Piper, the real Piper, comes out. And Piper gets in Hogan's face. The NWO beat down on Piper. They hold him there until security can get the break. But Roddy, 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 Roddy Piper with a haircut. And Hollywood Hogan got punches on each other for, uh, on the go-home show to Starcade. Again, the ratings were 3.1 to 1.5 for Nitro. I rated this episode a 6.5 out of 10 because it showcased great wrestling between Benoit and Eddie, Mysterio and Mr. JL, Regal and Malenko, plus there was the Piper Hogan ending, and not to mention Sting up in the rafters had a smirk on his face while this happened. And I think the smirk was as if to say, so these are my enemies now, the NWO. And it's just a matter of time before he shows himself as the WCW leader, the Sting. So great it's a continuation with the Sting storyline and good Starcade go home show for Hogan and Piper. 6.5 out of 10. 
That's this night, Joe. I'll see you on the next one. Brett Mix, and I'm out.